Stage managers plan for everything in a show. We plan if the actors are out, if the crew is out, if the set breaks, if the light board goes out, if there's bad weather, we plan for it all. But what's your plan for retirement? My name is Kent, and this is your Half Hour Call. Attention cast and crew, this is your Half Hour Call. Half hour to the top of the show. Half hour. What is up, my friends? We are back with our fourth and possibly final installment of Let's Talk About Money, giving you a jumpstart to become a financially healthy stage manager. Today, we are talking about savings and retirement. And while it may seem like the furthest thing from your mind, the sooner you start thinking about it, the easier it will be in the long run. But if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Kent and you are watching Half Hour Call where we shine the spotlight on technical theater. So if you want how-to videos, interviews with industry leaders and general theater updates, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video. Viewer beware, capitalism ahead. Before we dive any deeper, I want to warn you that the information in this video is very much about participating in capitalism. I'm presenting this to you as information about the system that we are all forced to be a part of. And I acknowledge that everyone's situation is different and not all information presented here will be helpful in every case, but just know that participating in a flawed system that you need to survive is not an endorsement of that system. For example, I believe that healthcare is a human right and shouldn't be ran for profit, but I still have health insurance. Also, this is not financial advice. This is just a compilation of research that I've done and you should always seek advice from a sworn fiduciary, which is a financial advisor legally required to operate in your best interests. If you don't know where you are, you can't figure out where you're going. So step one would be to learn exactly where you stand right now by calculating your net worth. This is your assets or what you own minus your liabilities or what you owe. So this is your cash on hand, the value of your car, any savings or investments, minus your student loans, your credit card debt, car loan, or anything else you owe. Now don't freak out. Whatever that number is, it is okay. If you're a recent college graduate, then the student loan crisis means that it is completely normal to have a negative net worth. In fact, it's estimated that the average millennial will have a negative median net worth until they are 30 years old. So while it is absolutely a problem, it is not a problem with you it is a problem with our system as a whole. We are approaching an entire year of our entire industry being almost completely shut down, and that will inevitably have a significant impact on even the most well-prepared people. Consumer debt reached an all-time high in 2020. If you have any high-interest consumer debt like credit cards, you may want to prioritize paying off debt before saving for retirement. Studies have shown that focusing on one financial goal at a time leads to greater success than splitting your focus between multiple targets. So let's take a look at an example of a common long-term plan that encourages you to focus on one goal at a time. Step one is to save a starter $1,000 emergency fund. Emergency funds keep you on track. Nearly 40% of Americans can't afford a $400 emergency. And as this past year has shown, life is unpredictable. And even people who had emergency funds in 2019 may be starting from scratch in 2021. For more on emergency funds, check out this video from Two Cents in the description below. Step number two is to pay off debt using the debt snowball. List your debts from smallest to largest and make minimum payments on all of them except for your smallest one and attack that one with all of your excess income until it's gone. Then apply both your excess income and the amount that was going towards your smallest minimum payment to attack your next smallest debt until that is paid off and so on and so forth until you've paid off everything. Studies from the Boston School of Business have shown that people who follow the snowball effect are less likely to give up because it gives you more victories up front to encourage you to keep going and stick it out for the long haul. Step three is fully funding your emergency fund. This is beefing up the emergency fund from step one, from $1,000 to between three and six months of expenses in a high yield savings account. For stage managers with unpredictable income, this may look more like six months to one year, but with a more flexible definition of emergency to include expected gaps in employment. Employment. And step four is to save for retirement. In the plan, which was designed for people with steady incomes, it is recommended to save 15% of your income toward retirement. Personally, my goal moving forward is to set aside 50% of whatever I earn that is above my survival budget for retirement. We'll talk about options available through the Equity League benefit funds in just a minute. But what if you've never been the type to save money? How can you get started? I think it's time to... Put a
Hi, I'm Ruthie Kramer, and I've been asked to talk to you about the 52-week money challenge. The 52-week money challenge is something I talk about on Facebook every January, as close to New Year's Day as I can. It's a way to save for the future, a way to save for an emergency account, the way to save for retirement, or a way to save for a trip or anything else you have planned, including a sandwich, a Starbucks coffee, or a tank of gas if you have a car. There are several different charts on the internet. You can see the chart. It is numbered from week one to 52. And for each week, there's an amount of money it asks you to save. On this particular chart, week one is $1, week two is $2, all the way through week 52, which is $52. Now, you don't have to save these monies in the order the paper instructs you to. In fact, I don't like saving the larger amounts of money in December when it's Christmas and when I have other things to spend that money on. The holidays, whatever holiday you might celebrate in the month of December. So I've done it backwards, starting with the largest amount of monies at the beginning of the year. I've also done it where when I work, I'm depositing the larger amount of monies. And when I'm unemployed, I deposit the smaller amount of money. And you don't have to strictly follow the chart in order either. You can get a dart board, put it on a dart board, throw a dart, and that's the amount of money you save that week. Or you can cut it in half. If you don't think you can save $1,378 in a year, you can start with 50 cents and in week two do two dollars and get yourself all the way up to twenty six dollars by the end of the year or double it if you have more income coming in the point isn't the amount of money you save the point is getting into the habit of saving once a week and to actually look forward to putting that amount of money away even if it's a dollar and to feel good and successful about yourself so that you'll come back the next week and save again. Like anything, you need to rehearse for savings. And this is the rehearsal part of savings to get you through to thinking in larger amounts of money. This is Ruth, and I hope this works for you. Let me know. Thank you, Ruth. If you did nothing else to save other than use that plan, starting at age 22 and investing in a broad index fund with a 7% annual return, you would have over $414,000 saved for retirement. But where should you put that money once you've saved it? Well, there are several different types of savings and retirement accounts, each with their own pros and cons. An IRA stands for an individual retirement account. These are tax advantaged retirement accounts that are not tied to employment. So even if you're working as an independent contractor, you can still contribute to these accounts. As of 2020, you can contribute an amount of $6,000 annually to an IRA or $7,000 if you are over the age of 50, but contributions have to be earned income. You can open a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. A traditional IRA uses pre-tax dollars, so anything that you contribute can be written off of your taxes for that year. However, in retirement, you will have to pay taxes on that money, plus the interest that it earned when you withdraw it. A Roth IRA, however, uses post-tax dollars, so you don't write anything off of your taxes. However, that money grows tax-free, so when it comes time to retire, you can keep a lot of the money that would otherwise be going to Uncle Sam. 401ks and 403bs are retirement accounts that are tied to employment. They're very similar, but the biggest difference is that a 401k is generally for for-profit companies and 403bs are generally for non-profit companies. The maximum contribution for both is currently $19,500 annually and catch-up payments are available to those who are closer to retirement. Something that not a lot of people know is that a 401k can be a Roth or traditional, just like an IRA, but currently the Equity League Benefit Fund plan is only traditional. Unlike IRAs where you independently deposit money, the 401k is set up to be withdrawn from your paycheck before it even hits your bank account, just like union dues and taxes. But no matter what you choose, these are accounts and not investments. Think of them like a vault in a bank where you can store cash, stocks, bonds, even deeds to properties and titles to some businesses. 
The reason it is so important to start saving early is because you get to harness the power of compound interest. The same thing that makes loans so dang hard to pay off will actually work to your advantage when saving. So your money earns money, which then earns more money and then turns around and earns even more money. Check this out. If your goal is to save $1 million for retirement and you start at age 20, you have to save $381 per month. But if you just wait five years until you're 25, you have to save $524 a month. And it's $728 a month by the time you hit 30. And this is scalable to any savings goal. The amount you need to save more than doubles every 10 years. I didn't open my first IRA until I was 39 years old which in my mind, looking back on it, is far too late. On this one, don't be me. Don't be Ruth. But where should these savings be invested to take advantage of this compound interest? Well, you should always speak with a financial advisor about your goals, but generally investments available in the retirement accounts we just discussed that could make up your portfolio include stocks, bonds, and cash. Stocks are generally the highest risk, highest reward investment and are typically recommended for far off goals. Stocks are a tiny sliver of equity in a company. If you heard about all that GameStop chaos last month, you understand exactly how volatile and risky stocks can be. The solution is diversification, which is investing smaller amounts in a wide array of different types of investments. So that way, if any one item goes belly up, your entire portfolio doesn't tank with it. While the rich can afford to purchase many different individual stocks, us normal folks typically need help from mutual funds and index funds. Mutual funds and index funds pool investors' money to purchase a variety of stocks so that a single share of an index fund can include stock in hundreds of different companies. Some of the most commonly recommended index funds are the S&P 500 index funds, which track the performance of the largest 500 publicly traded companies in the United States. One neat thing about these funds is that there's an option for every type of investor. You can choose certain industries, specific sizes of companies. There are even funds specifically built around socially responsible companies. It just takes a little digging and research. One newer index fund that I'm keeping my eye on is NACP, which tracks the Morningstar Minority Empowerment Index. You can use your retirement savings to vote with your dollars. Just make sure you do your research and talk to a professional before making any major money moves. Bonds are similar to stocks, but instead of purchasing equity in a company, you are loaning the government or a corporation money with the expectation of making a steady fixed rate of return. Bond funds like index funds spread out the risk among a large group of bonds being bought and sold by the fund firm. Just like stocks, bonds Bonds can be bought and sold, which means they can go up and down in value, but generally they are less volatile, which makes them ideal for nearer goals. Cash is cash. While your bank or money market account might pay a small interest rate, it rarely, if ever, keeps pace with inflation. While this is the least volatile, you'll actually be losing about 2% of your purchasing power per year to inflation. This year, I set up a Roth IRA through Vanguard because that was what was recommended to me by my dad. It was super easy to set up and super easy to use, but a lot of the Vanguard funds have a minimum investment of a few thousand dollars. So if you wanna get started sooner, you can use Robinhood and invest any amount of money. Plus, if you use the link down in the description below, you'll get a free stock and I'll get a free stock. And that's just free money, which is always smart. However, Robinhood's user interface really feels like a game. Don't fall for it. 97% of day traders lose money. Those are worse odds than investing in a Broadway show, which is one of the riskiest investments you can make. But if you use Robinhood as a fee-free brokerage account until you save enough to get an IRA, it's a great option. The Equity League Benefit Fund is a completely separate entity from Actors' Equity Association as required by law. It is managed by representatives of Actors' Equity Association, representing the employees, and the Broadway League, representing the employers, hence the name Equity League. It manages our health insurance plan, our pension plan, and our 401k. Equity League offers traditional 401k accounts through John Hancock Retirement Service. Production and CETA contracts include employer contributions of 4% to your 401k with a weekly maximum of $300 per employee. This is not a match, meaning you don't actually have to opt in to defer 4% of your salary for the employer to contribute that 4%. It is just a contribution. On most other Actors' Equity Association contracts, you can elect to contribute to your 401k by deferring any percentage of your paycheck to your retirement account. And once you turn 59 and a half, that money is yours. It is not contributed to a collective fund like health and pension and there's no need to vest or qualify. If you are offered the opportunity through employment to divert your salary 
portion of your salary into the Equity League 401k. Try it. You can start with a very small percentage of your salary and you can change it during the job if you want to. On many equity contracts, employers are required to make health and pension contributions to the Equity League Benefit Fund. The pension fund is available to members who vest or are qualified to participate in the pension plan. Currently, this means working two or more weeks within a year in at least five years over the course of your career. It's important to note that these plans only apply to work covered by the union. So that means union contracts and the MOU. Any work outside of AEA jurisdiction and not on an MOU cannot contribute to either of these plans. So a blend of independent accounts and equity league programs may be required to have enough income in retirement. I've been a member of Actors' Equity for 38 years. I've lived in New York for 43 years. And I just wanna tell you the time goes like that. It goes so fast. You may not think that the pension is something you need to think about right now. I challenge you that it's something you should be grateful that your employers are paying into because you are definitely going to use it. I know this has been a lot of information, so do me a huge favor and hit that like button so I know that you made it to this part of the video, because this is just scratching the surface on the information and options to plan for retirement. Down in the description below are some of my favorite resources for more information on these topics, including my personal favorite finance YouTube channel, Two Cents, and the link to sign up to get a free stock from Robinhood. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. My name is Kent, and this has been your half hour call. This snazzy feathered production assistant, as well as other cool stage management merchandise, is now available at kentjamescollins.com store. Link in the description below.